Hi, I'm Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Megan with Believe in the Run. And welcome to Between Two Shoes. One of my favorite segments we do. Is it? It is because, uh, you know, obviously we can tell you all the specs and what we think of this shoe, but this is when it comes head to head because we get a lot of questions, this shoe or that shoe. And I think people are curious about the Rocket X2 from Hoka and the Cielo X1, which Hoka saying is their fastest race day shoe ever. But we kind of had different feelings about it. And uh, I think we want to go over and kind of describe the differences between these two race day shoes and our preferences. Yeah, so the Rocket X2 was what I feel like was Hoka's very first competitive race day shoe. They Agreed. obviously had the Rocket X1, but it didn't have the Piba foam and it just felt like they weren't there in terms of a really true competitive racer. A viable race day yeah. shoe. So, Rocket X2 was a very fun surprise. We got this probably about a year ago, right around this time. And unanimously, the team loved it. Like yeah. Robbie, you, me, everybody really liked this shoe. It worked for everybody. It was pretty good. Yeah, so pretty typical Piva foam. You've got a carbon fiber plate. This is a pretty racy upper. It's very minimal, um, very breathable, simple lacing. Just all around pretty simple, but really works. And while it's not the lightest race day shoe option, it is right in the mix. It's around 8.2 ounces for my size 10 and a half, which if I go with a Vaporfly 3, it's like closer to seven something, seven four, I think. Um, so it's in that realm of lightweight, responsive, bouncy, what you expect from a super shoe. And then they went out and came up with the CLO X1. Right, and this one they're saying, hey, this is it. We packed everything into this. This is our new fast race day shoe. So we had mixed feelings about it, but before we get into that, let's just talk about what makes up the shoe. It's got a very unique upper, which kind of has these threads that are wrapped in, kind of creates like a corduroy look. Yeah. That's what we were calling it. I think the Hoka team described it as almost like fishing line. Yeah. Um, but it's a very unique upper here. It's not what I would say looks or feels like a race day mm -hmm. upper. Um, it's a little bit more substantial and it's just, it's just different. You complained about even getting your foot into it. I think once it's on your foot though, it did an amazing job of holding your foot over this midsole. I agree with you there. It's a sock-like fit once you get your foot into the shoe, but honestly getting your foot in there is a whole situation. Yeah, it's just not quite as soft or, I don't know, it's just not as airy as I'm expecting from a race day shoe. I like the fit. I like it as more of a trainer style fit than a race day fit, but Besides that, let's get down. We've got two different foams here. They're both Piva based, but they're different durometers. So you've got a softer layer closer to your foot. You have a very unique wing plate, carbon plate in between the two uh, foams. And then you have a firmer Piva foam with tons of rubber coverage. You can see on both these shoes, you're not gonna be uh, missing out on rubber coverage. No, not at all. I think the first thing I noticed about the CLO X1 is that step-in feel, and it's just a very different sensation. It's, it's bouncy, it's fun, and then taking it out on the roads, I feel like it comes to life. The rocker's pretty extreme. The rocker is very extreme. I mean, you just have, it feels like you have more than the 39 millimeters of foam underfoot, but it's street legal. Yeah, and I have to say, it's one of the most enjoyable shoes to run in, period. It kind of spoiled me. We had some regular daily trainers come in after this, and I kind of miss the feeling that you get out of this shoe. This shoe feels amazing on your foot. And you just said daily trainers, which I think is alluding a little bit to how we feel about this shoe. It is so much fun to run in. All different sorts of paces, all different lengths of mileage out there. You could take it for four miles. You could take it for 24 miles. And I think it's going to feel great. Where I don't feel like this fits in is the starting line. And why is that, Meg? It's a bit heavy. So according to the spec sheet, it's an ounce heavier than the Rocket X2. I think you measured your two sizes and it was even a bit more than that. Yeah, it was, it was about an ounce and a half heavier. And it feels heavier on the foot. Yeah. So. What I really like about the Rocket X2 is it has that race day feel that we're kind of pre-programmed to like. It, it has that 
Vaporfly feel. It fits in there against the Endorphin Pro 4. It fits against like all the premier running race day shoes. The upper feels like a race day shoe. The midsole feels like what you're expecting. The plate's pretty uh, typical for race day. This one's more experimental. And I just feel like the weight does play into how I felt about picking it up. It did also seem to react a little bit to temperature change. So when we were running up here, it was colder temps. We went down to Orlando, Florida for trials and the foam seemed to soften up a little bit, which made this feel a little more bouncy and a little more responsive and may have mitigated some of the weight, but still like just didn't give me that race day vibe feel. Yeah, I have to agree. Um, this felt to me more like the Prime X Strung 2 or what we wanted the Prime X Strung 2 to feel like, where it's just that very lively, bouncy, fun ride, um, great for training days, but maybe you swap into another shoe for race day. Yeah, a lot of times we're testing different shoes and so we are shifting between one shoe and another shoe. When we got this shoe, we were heading down to the trials. I wanted to get miles in it. And then when we went to the trials, it's the only shoe I brought to run in. And I didn't hate it. Like yeah. I liked strapping this on for easy runs, faster runs. And I have to say that it is easier to pick up your pace. I don't know about race day pace, but certainly up tempo runs, this shoe would sing in that case. So this is between two shoes. And I think that I, it's almost like it shouldn't be between two shoes. I know it's almost not apples to apples here. And here's what I will say. If I am towing the line of a marathon, and I am going for fun, and I don't have a time goal, I'm lacing this up. If I am going for a PR time and I'm trying to run fast, I'm taking the Rocket X2. Okay, so that's it. For race day, Rocket X2 wins for both of us. Yeah. However, if I was to pick between these shoes just to have one shoe, if I could only have one, that maybe I'm gonna do some more of my training in, because the foam didn't really die out. Did you notice the foam dying out? No. Yeah, it, the foam didn't really die out. I've ran over 80 miles in these. It feels still fun. And uh, I mean, this is one of my top shoes that I've ever run in. Yeah. Uh, it's just not one that I would pick for race day. So. So is it, but which is it? What are you choosing? Uh, if I could only have one shoe, I'd go CLO X1. Okay. If I'm going for race day, it's Rocket X2. I'm, gonna, I'm the same. All right. So, I mean, it's kind of fun that now we used to beat up on Hoka for not updating their foams and for kind of like resting on stuff. Now we've got two great shoes that are options for people for race day. I certainly think if you're someone who's not trying to go for that PB or maybe you're going for a four hour marathon or something like that and you want a shoe that's gonna be comfortable the whole time but still make you feel somewhat fast with a rocker and the PIBA foam, this could be your race day shoe. I do think uh, it has a place on the start line, just maybe not when you're trying to go for that PB. That's a wrap on this one. Uh, if you have a shoe that you want us to do between two shoes on or are interested, feel free to leave it in the comments. Also, like and subscribe and uh, make sure you give this one a thumbs up. Anything else, Meg? No, you're gonna get so many comments between two shoes. You think so? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's it.